All right, here we go. Let's get started. Math 7. We're talking unit rates. This is our first chapter, so let me get a round of introductions going before we get too far here. We are the Algebros. Here are all four of us with an Algebra selfie. In, unfortunately, that is the best selfie that we could come up with. We took a lot of tries. You would never guess it. Let's label these teachers as we go around because you're going to have them throughout the year. Right down there in the bottom left is Mr. Kelly right on his forehead. Plenty of forehead space to write Kelly on his forehead. I am Mr. Brust. I'm right there in the middle. That guy right there is Mr. Sullivan. He likes to go by Sully. And then the last dude on the right is Mr. Bean. So there we go. So you'll have these guys throughout the year teaching you different chapters, getting you through this stuff. Should be pretty incredible. All right, so let's get started here. So uh, we're going to start with a little video. We showed a little Pac-Man there. We got Pac-Man and one of those ghosts. I think it's like Inky, Blinky, uh, Pinky, all these different ghosts. Uh, we're going to do a little Pac-Man versus Inky. I believe that guy's Inky. So check out this little video, and then we're going to talk about it. Who will win the race? Okay, so that was the county fair water gun version of it. I know you're on pins and needles here to see who won that race. Let's talk about it. So let's get some math behind it. So you're thinking probably that whole time, hey, how fast are they going? So we're talking about rates. So if you look just on the top here at the rates, forget about the unit rates. Let's look just at these for right now, the rates. These are all rates. So 120 miles in two hours, $24 in three hours, 80 miles on four gallons of gas. These are different rates you could have. So they're a lot like ratios from Math 6 um, when you did like boys to girls or you did apples to oranges. You were comparing like fruit or people. Now we're doing two different units of measure. So miles per hour, dollars per hour, miles per gallon. So that's what a rate is. So we're specifically talking about unit rates. So check it out. What makes a unit rate? So now look at those. How are they different? How are they the same? Think about it for a second before uh, we talk about it. So 60 miles per hour, $8 per hour, 20 miles per gallon. What do you notice about unit rates? Well, let's jot this down. So write in your notes. Uh, what do you notice about all of these? Hopefully you notice the denominator, the bottom number, denominator. I got to sound it out. The denominator is 1. So when we're looking at these things, it's really nice to have a unit rate of, uh, unit rate means the denominator is 1. So now it's a lot easier for my brain to think about going 60 miles per hour. Or if I have a job where I get it paid $8 per hour, or my car gets 20 miles per gallon. These are nice per one thing. So it's a little bit easier to think about, uh, a little bit easier to compare because we're looking at um, Inky versus Pac-Man. So it kind of levels the playing field on comparing. So with that in mind, let's take a look here. So I really broke down that video and I noticed, hey, Pac-Man goes 18 feet in six seconds. So we can write that as a rate. As a rate, you just write it out. It's 18 feet. Whoops right down on top, over what? Six seconds. So that goes on bottom. So there's our rate. It's just a fraction. We're comparing these two by division. Boom, there it is. So that's nice. That's how fast he's going. Can we reduce that? Sure, you can reduce it. Um, if we reduce it all the way, six goes into 18 three times. So this reduces into three feet every one second. And that is the unit rate. So it's kind of that reduced fraction. It's breaking it down. Or you can write it as Hey, he goes three feet per second. So fill this into your notes. So that's nice because now I can say, ah, oh, Pac-Man, three feet per second. This is really good for my brain to think about things. 18 feet per six seconds is cool, but now I've got a really good idea of per second. So this unit rate is getting down per one. Can't stress that enough. Um, how about compared to Inky, the ghost? So he goes 20 feet in eight seconds. So let's make him as a rate. We're going to go 20 feet every eight seconds. Does that reduce? Sure. They're both divisible by two. Uh, they're also divisible by four. So let's divide them by four. So the top divided by four will give me five feet. And then eight divided by four is two. So uh, this guy goes five feet every two seconds. If we're going to write that as a unit rate, though, we're going to say it's five halves feet per second. So it's kind of weird. Don't freak out here. It's okay. We like to say there was a one in the denominator, but this works. This is five halves 
feet per second. You can go five halves feet per second or bust out the calculator. Let's actually, ooh, can I get, there it is. Okay, I knew it was here somewhere. Let me clear out all the mess I was working on earlier. So just divide it. What is five divided by two? Well, five divided by two is 2.5. So this is the same thing as 2.5 feet per second. Now that is really nice in the decimal form to think about that. So this truly is a unit rate, five halves feet per second. You're saying feet per this one second. It's kind of weird sometimes to think about. Make it a decimal, now it's really nice. So according to this, who's moving faster? Would you rather go three feet per second or two and a half feet per second if I'm in a race? In this case, it's Pac-Man. Woo, he's gonna win. Didn't even need to use power pills uh, <laughs> to get the adrenaline going to catch the uh, to catch the ghost there. Awesome. So that's all we're doing. We're looking at rates. We're looking at unit rates. Um, how fast are things are going? How how often do things happen? All right. Let's try another one, and this is gonna still be Pac-Man theme. Let's say there's uh, Pac-Man eats eight ghosts every two power pills. So I want you to write um, this as a unit. I'm sorry, as a unit rate. So you can start with a rate. It's eight ghosts every two pills. That's it. So if you remember, if you haven't played the game, he eats these little pills. When he eats these little pills, he can go ahead and then eat the ghost. So can I reduce this? Sure. This turns into four over one. So that's four ghosts every what? Every one pill. Or the nice way to write it when you have it down to one is four ghosts per pill. So there's the unit rate, four ghosts per pill. That's a nice way to think about it. Boom, very nice. Is that the only answer? No, you actually could have done this another way. So I'm gonna put a big or there. What if you did the other way? You could say, oh, well he eats two pills every time he goes, he eats eight ghosts. So he's, gosh, he must be hungry. So two pills for every eight ghosts. If I reduce this, what happens here? So remember when I reduce it, the two goes into here once, two goes in there four times. I actually get one over four. Totally cool, it's just one pill for every four ghosts. So again, it is a unit rate, it's just a one-fourth pill per ghost. So it's totally legit, you can say that. That is a unit rate, I'll accept either one of these if you want a fourth of a pill, or maybe you know what a fourth is, a quarter, a fourth of a pill. You could even make it a decimal, I'm totally down with that, it's 0.25. So if you want, you can make it the decimal, say it's 0.25 pills per ghost. Both are right answers. I'll accept either one of them. Awesome. Why don't you pause it real quick? So legit pause it, really pause it. Try this one, then I'm going to put the answer up, see how you did. Okay, so here are the two possible answers that you could have come up with. You could say it's either eight-thirds dollars per hour or three-eighths hours per dollar. These are great. Did anybody out there go decimal? So I did. I left this because I wanted to go over it with you. If you went decimals, if you said eight divided by three, Normally I'm going to say round to the nearest hundredth or to the uh, second decimal place. But when you got 2.6666666, in my calculator, I just want to let you know, that's not really a 7. The calculator is rounding here. This is actually 2.666 repeating forever. And how do we show that? It's 2.6 with a bar on top. So you can say it's 2.6 dollars per hour. And again, the key is the label. You must label these. Or I'm going to mark them wrong. I apologize. But you got to label it because I got to know what you're talking about. It's eighth or dollars per hour is very different than hours per dollar. So if you did the other one as a decimal, is it any friendlier? Let's say three divided by eight is 0.375. I'm gonna have us round to the nearest hundredth and it'll say it in directions. If it's not written, you can, you know, I didn't specify, you're totally cool. But if I round the nearest hundredths, I'm gonna turn 8.375 into, I'm sorry, 0.375 into 0.38. And again, this is hours per dollar. Awesome. Very, very nice. So we're converting to unit rates. This whole chapter is about unit rates. We're going to do a lot of unit rates comparing how fast things are happening. Fantastic. Let's wrap it up already. I love it. Uh, which unit rate is the easiest to work with? So I know there's two answers, but a lot of time one is just friendlier. One is just the guy we want to work with here. So would you rather say miles per hour or hours per mile? So let's try it. Let's say if I did 90 miles every two hours is one answer, or you can say two hours every 90 miles. So if you're thinking about driving in the car, what would you rather say? Well, let's reduce it first. What is 90, how many times does two go into 90? It goes in there 45 times. So would you rather say 45 miles per hour? See how cool that is, 45 miles per hour. So this is just 45 miles per hour, 
or if I reduce this, this is 1 over 45, and we've got hours per mile. So you go 1 45th, it's legit. You go 1 45th of an hour every mile, but we don't talk like that. That's a weirdo, man. We're not going to say that. We're going to say, hey, it's 45 miles per hour. So, ah, sorry, what happened there? So I'm going to circle the one that looks nicer here. This is way better. So they're both right. This bottom one is hard to use, though. So it's just going to get you in trouble in word problems or situations. Uh, so we want the one that's a little friendlier. Let's do number two, then I'll have you do the last one in your second. All right, let's take a look at this jobby job here. So you got this job. You make $12 every hour. This is nice because it's already unit rate. You get $12 per hour. So let's write that in. Here it is. Be careful. Dollars per hour. This is $12 per hour. So you get $12, and the labels are key, every one hour. That's nice. That's a good job. I'd be like, I'll take that job. $12 an hour. Could you write it the other way, though? Sure. You could flip it upside down and say, hey, in one hour, what do I make? In one hour, you make $12. Well, how does that sound? What does that mean? Well, I can't reduce it. It's 1 12th. It means you get 1 12th of an hour per dollar. So if you really want to count, when do I make my first dollar? It would happen in a 12th of an hour. But again, we don't really talk like that. We're most, ah, I did it again. I don't know what's going on here. I'm having some issues. All right, here we go. Let's try that circle again. $12 per hour is much friendlier. And it turns out a lot of times, we here's some little hints for you. Things we like to do. We like to put the money in the numerator, money on top. So we like the money on top. We also like to have time in the bottom. It's just this general trend. It's not 100% always true. Uh, but if we can keep money on top, time on bottom, that really helps us out here. So think about that when you're doing this one. I see money. I'm going to want to put it in the numerator. So again, pause it, try this last one, see how it goes, and then check your answer. Good luck. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully you got uh, $12 for two-pound Kit Kat bar would be $6 a pound. Or you can write the other way as one-sixth of a pound for every dollar you spend. So these are actually both pretty good. Like I don't think I would uh, get after you, but in this case, it is easier for my thing to say, how much are we charging per pound? So I'm going to say per pound. That one's nicer. You want to buy that Kit Kat bar, you're paying by the pound. So we're going to do a lot of comparing, going shopping. Should be lots of fun. Break it down to how much you're paying per ounce, per liter, per gallon, per pound. Put that money on top. Put that time on bottom whenever you can, and you should be good to go. So good luck on the practice. Make sure you grade your answers. Good luck on the match check. Peace out.